to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and you're in the Totally Awesome Kitchen. I'm going to take you fishing for carp. You're going to love this bait guys because I am going to be catching carp on something that's so old school can't even remember it. Actually, I hope you do remember me. My wife's given me a haircut. So short for the summer. I feel as if my brain's been exposed. Anyway, I'm going to be catching these carp hopefully on... What are they? Can you see them? Can you see them? Now you see them, now you don't. Reed puppies, potatoes. Huh? That's right. A parboiled potato, not this size, used to be one of the best top baits that us carp fishermen used 50 years ago. It was. There were no boilies, there were no buzzers, there was nothing. You stayed awake all night, you struck the fish, but your bait was la potato. Check it out. This folks is a budget bait design that will not break your little bait bag. Two and a half kilos for... <laughs> it can't be true. Two and a half kilos for one pound, 19 pence. In the background I have the boiling implements all ready to cook these. But at first, I mean they're just like you cook them for your roast and that sort of thing. So they're going to be boiled potatoes. I'm going to parboil them. These big ones we're going to be using for fishing margin fishing close in. And then I'm going to be using these tin ones over here. That you just simply open with a the tin. They're new potatoes, they're smaller. They're going to be my long distance casting ones. And boy, years ago when we used to fit those with a crust pad, free lined, they were cast 60 plus 70 yards. And I will show you that later on. Let's get these peeled and let's get them into that scalding water. <laughs> Now comes the chore, which of course is potato peeling, which in the army days was a sort of luxury form of thing you did to pass the time when you've been a naughty boy. When they're really large ones like this, if you want me to, because these ones, don't forget I'm going to be fishing margin wise, I cut them in half. Just cut those big ones in half and they will cook a little bit quicker. I get them into boiling water. Now boiling water says itself, it's boiling. Please be careful with boiling water. If not, get a lady to do it for you. The boiling water, I mean. Cut in half, let's get them in the pan. I find if you put them in from the side, the boiling water splashes all over the cooker and not your fingers. And that means you don't get any pain, except from the wife when she comes to clean the cooker up and wonders why it's such a mess. They're all on the boil. I would guess, look, everybody's cooker's different, whether you've got gas, whether you've got electric, Everything's different. Boiling water, put them in. Normally you're going to cook them until, what we used to do, we used to put a fork or a knife in them and then if it slides off, it's nice and softly cooked. You want to do it a bit less than that because it's for fishing. I'm not going to be used for margin fishing when they're cold, I hasten to add. But you don't want them to go totally to mush. Now, as well as using these for margin fishing, let me show you these little ones because they are long distance, long range baits. Now, these little ones that come in a tin, and they are just regular new potatoes, which are small ones. They don't need cooking, they're already clean, almost, almost ready to go. But you squeeze them a little bit too hard. To cook them to perfection for human consumption, it says here, five, six minutes in boiling water, so not very long. So I'm gonna let those cook for about 15 minutes. Doesn't matter when, they, when you do this, because you're not gonna eat them anyway, where well, you can if they get cold and you get hungry. But I'm telling you, ones like this, that size, cast an amazing distance, free lined. So we used to fish that. That was a standard bait. In fact, I caught my first of a carp, a wild carp, on potato that we dug out in the farmer's field and boiled up on the bank. And that's, that's the honest truth. Any of these, this size like this, look, perfect for casting. We used to put a crust pad on there, which I will show you, to help, you know, basically give you a base for casting so the hook didn't pull right through it. So I'm going to pop these in another saucepan of boiling water, just five, six minutes, just like a cookery program, and of course, you're left with a tin, which if you're childish like me while you're waiting for that, you can put two of these, don't forget, put a piece of string between the two, go 30 yards over there, and you can talk through it like this, you can talk right through it like this, and the person listening at the other end can actually hear what you're saying. It was an invention of the first telephone, I kid you not, kid you not kids, string through there, over there, another can, string through the base, pull it tight, talk in there, put your ear there, don't cut yourself, they're sharp, don't cut yourself. 
you know, don't go, ah, what was that he said? Oh, my ear's on the floor. Be careful, but that's what we used to play with as kids. Dangerous edge tins. And you can also do this with them. <laughs> Good job my wife's out. Right, the running potatoes have had their 20 minutes. I just get, right, this is getting nice or something, put it in a potato, and they should start to slide off. Don't let them go to mush. 15, 20 minutes max. Take it one, I think they need a little bit longer. And these, well, I call my long distance ones, they don't need much at all now. They're nearly done, that's literally, <sighs> it's hot. Perfect. Five minutes for the new potatoes, that's all we need. I'm turning them off now. Don't forget, if you leave them in that water, it's boiling water, although it's just got off the boiler, boil, off the boiler, off the boil, it's still cooking the potatoes. So we're gonna strain that off through, why they call those things? I'm gonna strain those off through one of those things with all the holes in it, called a colander and then just let them cool in the pan. I'll sort them out then in the morning. These ones, once we're, they're done, I'm gonna keep them set like I want my hook baits long distance away from them, otherwise just, I don't want them bashing in and getting broken up. Right way through the steam. There we go, guys. It's all on a great big tray there, plastic tray. I haven't broken them up. I don't want them broken up yet. I wanna do that tomorrow when it's cold. I've tried not to, you know, get them all bashed around. I've got my long distance hook baits, my new potatoes here. I've got my big jumbo margin potatoes, and let me tell you, you're probably falling off your armchair with laughter at the moment. I'm going to show you some books, or I'm going to read some books to you with quotes in them about using parboiled potatoes when I was a youngster. It was the carp bait of the time. But also, somebody told me recently when they saw me using this as a mashed potato additive, they said, Graham, for God's sake, don't ever put it on YouTube. One of Britain's top matchmen uses mashed potato in his feed, and it's a killer. So, we'll find out tomorrow. We won't find out. I know. But isn't it nice to think a matchman's using mashed potato in amongst his ground bait as well? Let this cool off. Get tackle ready. See you guys in the morning. <laughs> okay, well, I've mashed all those potatoes up. This is for the uh, inside rods. And I've put the old pellets, I've mashed some of these with them. Right, those four mils, I've mashed them in as well. I haven't really mulched into nothing like you would mashed potato at home because I want some chunky bits in there as well which will match my hook baits. I put the four mil pellets in there because I want to draw some small fish roach and rudd in there nibbling away and the confidence that that will give the carp to come in. Don't forget, I don't expect anybody's probably even fished on this lake in history with potatoes. So they've got to get used to it. We'll give it a go. I'm going to bait up close in there and I'm going to put also some of these ground baiting pellets on the base with some potato in them like this but you'll notice I've, I've made these up pretty much the same size as a potato so the theory being the small fish nibble all these away but they can't nibble these away and that is probably the forerunner of the invention of the boilie we used to use those so we could fish overnight without them getting nibbled away let's get them out there and get cracking so it's going to be the ground bait first and potato then more potato on top of that you know with the pellets mixed in with them the mush mashed potato and then a few samples probably a dozen the actual size of the hook bait that i want to use fingers crossed the, the base ground bait first get into the mashed potato and then i'm going to get a pick up on one of these small ones Now here you can see these are the boiled potatoes, the larger ones I've done. They're going to be using for sort of attracting smaller fish as well because the more fish you can get in your swim feeding, the more confident you're going to have that a carp will come along and find them. So I just crumble them and break them up with my fingers. I don't want them to go into a fine mash and then I make them into a ball and obviously catapult them out. Now these will break up on impact generally because they don't squeeze together very hard. If you want to squeeze them together harder, and if you do want to 
catapult them any farther than I'm doing here at the moment, I'm trying to punch them out by the edge of that island, then you could simply add some ground bait to them. And here, I've got some regular four mil pellets in with the potatoes. I've made regular size potato balls, if you like, because I find when you're catapulting like this, this is what we used to do old school, probably before they invented swim feeders, I should think, is we used to have to bait up like this. So if you had a consistency of the size of the ball, it's much easier to retain your accuracy and you could pump 10 or 12 balls out. So don't just fire, put one ball out and then different size ones. Try and keep them all the same size. Now for close in fishing, margin fishing, with the softer mashed potato loose, this bush has got to be a plus factor. It's a typical sort of carpy area and these, I don't use the, the bigger balls, I use looser balls here, have to squeeze them together and I throw them in quite hard so they break up on impact. Okay, that's all the base bait out. Now I've just got my bait sized potatoes, which are these parboiled potatoes this size, and also the very larger ones, I've cut into halves and quarters and I fire them out one at a time because the small fish won't nibble these away. And they, they go pretty well in a catapult, so be careful. Very easy to overcook it. See, there's a whole one, which I can send over the back of that island if I really gave it some. Brings back memories. 40 years ago. 50 years ago. You will get the odd tension bream on these, but not on the big ones. Get quite accurate against the ducks now. Oops, oh dear. Parboiled potato on the bonce of the duck. What a shame. They don't know what to make of them, they peck them. Because it's a sort of neutral taste. They spit them out again. Right, boys, baking up time. Okay, I'll just show you this way, which is the way I used to fish years ago. With baits like this size, which you use, say, a four or a two carp hook. Now, if you push the hook through there, you're going to split it in half. So what we used to do was cut the hook off, or not tie it on, use either a baiting needle, or in this case, a paper clip with the end bent over, put a loop in the end like this, pull it through so the line's gone right through. So the only thing that's going through that bait is the line, not the hook, and then tie the hook on. Right, hook's tied on. Now you can just slide that straight down, it's actually going down on its own, look at that, and pull that straight into the bait, or, and that's fine for free lining, or for distance casting and free lining, we used to make a crust pad, cutting out a piece of crust, obviously crust, a square, like this, it was nice and quiet. The mowers stopped, thank God. God, don't know, he's cutting the grass or trying to polish it. I think he's halfway through to Brisbane in Australia. White side, brown side. I go through the white side, out into the brown side. Background, hoping you can see this. Turn it, tap it well in there. Turn it upside down. It slides over the shank of the hook, just pull it so it sits. Absolutely perfectly like that. Then this gets all soft and soppy in the water, and then when you strike, you come straight through the potato, and hopefully into the car. Well, not hopefully, so we used to fish years ago. Now, years ago, there weren't the commercial waters, they were just regular club waters, and we would be catching what would be, I would guess, in the late 60s, 70s, early 70s, the original leany fish, we were all fishing for them. A 10 pound, a double figure cart was the one you caught, you didn't get loads of three and four pounders, they weren't about, the match scene hadn't sort of exploded then, but what you did get was a lot of 10 to 20s, a 20 was a really good fish, 30 almost unheard of, but as I say, that was the bait. A bit bizarre, but we're going to try and catch a carp on it old school to show you if it still works. The rig is a standard sliding link ledger with a short link and one SSG there for weight, which you don't really need, the potato alone will cast out there but I've got that in case I get a drop back bite being a commercial water, there should be plenty of carp in here, but whether they get in, fall in love with these, I don't know. Let's get it out there. Okay, 
okay, for the margin rod down by that bush. See if I can get any bites there. Same, we've got a link ledger there, probably a bit bigger than a BB, I guess. There, 12 inches hook, size 8. What I've done there is because I'm going to use more mash stuff in there, I'm assuming they like it's soft. I'm doing it both ways here. I'm trying to hold potato out there and I'm trying a piece of potato close into the margins. I just cut one of these in half and then look, just like lunch meat or anything, you can just hook it, roll it through, you can bury it as long as you keep it nice and soft and just leave it like that. You can actually tip that with maggots, worms, potato or worm used to be good in the margins years ago. And I was wiggly worm on the end of that. Dendrobina worm or a small lob used to be good. I'm going to drop this one in the margins, then put bobbins on, sit back and eventually wait for them to slam up. I hope. Here you can see, just as my bite indicator, I'm using for my bobbin a rolled up piece of silver paper and the spine from a notebook, a plastic spine cut out of a notebook. And that's what sort of things we used to use years ago. I'm going old school and that's what we use for bite indication. I still use them now because they are so, so light. So you can see how I've missed that bite there. You have to sit and you have to strike the fish. They will not hook themselves. You have to fish properly. Well, I've lost, I've lost two other carp, guys. I just started scratching around the inside and I just thought, this might not be the wisest swim because I've got a good carp here. The wind's picking up. Could lose the umbrella. I've been talking to another awesome army supporter of the film show. He loves the show. And he said it's been a nightmare. Last Sunday they all struggled. They had a match here, I think it's somewhere half of it in catch. I've got a carp hooked up now, but there's a snag right to the left of me, which I hadn't looked at when I first looked at the swim. But here is hopefully a potato carp. And I'm gonna get this one out, fingers crossed. It has been a tough one today. I've resorted to putting one rod on the inside and I'm catching roach and pearl. This one incidentally came on the inside. Well, it hasn't came anywhere yet because I'm still fighting it. Up by the bush. I'm hoping it doesn't go back in there. It's got one of those very bad feelings that it's going to ping off. It's one of those days. Mike's fishing over at Sandhurst. It's a hard water for a very big carp. Trying to make a film over there. He's like me struggling. And he said exactly the same last night, apparently. Not one person got a carp. He's there today, just been texting back and forwards. Ow. That's what's giving me a lot of trouble. And also all day, nothing. So fingers crossed. I'm going to concentrate on this. I can't talk too much, though. Can't talk too much. You've got to laugh at that, haven't you? Oh, he's going for the snag. I don't go for the snag. Oh man, alive! It looks like a lump. Holy cow! Potato carp. It's a beaut. Well, it was a long time coming, people. But there it is. Probably. Extremely close to 10, I'd say. Thank goodness for that. Man alive. What a tough day. But the spuds came good. Check it out. There we go. There we go. So guys, a potato caught carp on the inside. Mashed potatoes. It's not as good as those garden peas I used, but just goes to show you that old school can still work. Been a long afternoon. 
I'm hoping I might pick another one up. At least I've shown you it works. Now listen, I fully appreciate that a lot of you younger guys and probably middle-aged guys, let's say anybody from 10 to about 40, think that now Graham is totally, he's been totally let out of his cage. Potatoes? No, no, guys, I speak the truth. I do not speak with forked tongue because I'm old enough to have used them years ago. You think I joke? I have about 600 books here. I find two books. Well, well, well. There's one. Car. How to catch them. D.L. Stewart. I believe that will be Dave Stewart who came on one of my marlin trips once, I think. Good angler. I think he had the last 40 pound Avon, Hampshire Avon salmon, I think. Anyway. What's in here? Oh my God. Parboiled potato. I joke not. Here. Parboiled potatoes. Even where bread may be the best bait for carp, the potato will often account for more fish. This is because in waters that hold other fish, roach, bream, etc., the carp never has a chance to see one's bait. It's nibbled away by these other fish in a very short space of time. They cannot eat a whole potato of a size to attract carp as it is too large and cannot whittle it down to a size they can take. Now, if you use small pieces of potato, you can get other species as well. Tiny pieces, you know, size your little fingernail there. But there you go. It's in this book, Carp, How to Catch Them. Oh, and it is, by the way, 1957, 1957. 59 years ago, and it says at the front of this book, it is the third impression, the third impression. Oh my god. Another one? Oh no, no, don't, don't think I'm telling you. There is pictures of it, guys. There is pictures of what we used to use years ago. Here is the potato. This one has a different one to a crust pad. It has a little, you could piece of twig or piece of grass in the, in the base of it. And you can actually loose feed a potato and cast it out to the lilies close in. I mean, <laughs> they didn't have tin potatoes, I suppose, like they're tiny little. They did! My god, they did! Potatoes, mainly a bait for carp, but also at times used for tench, bream, and chub. Not me saying this, it's in a book, really old book. Tin potatoes are best for short range, free line fishing. Oh my God, Graham was actually telling the truth. Larger unskinned potatoes for distance casting and for reducing the interest of other potato loving species. Well, I'm a potato loving species, like roast potatoes. So there you go, God. But it does say here, Potatoes are prepared by boiling them until they are soft, so soft as would be required for the table, human consumption. To bait a potato, the line is threaded with a baiting needle, la di da di da all the same. But something I hadn't thought of, look, just there, a potato disc. So even back then, this is the Observer's Book of Course Fishing, even back then, like 50 or 60 years ago, the angles were using sliced potatoes, they were thinking, they were trying, they were doing different things. So potato does work. It's, as I said, the sort of forerunner of the boilie, which is there basically so that anglers can catch fish, stay up all night, go to sleep, and the little fish don't nibble it away. Now we did the same with a potato, basically much, much bigger, because we only wanted a big fish, not because we wanted to sleep in a bivy all night. We know <laughs> bivies weren't invented then, you just had an umbrella, you did it man style. But there you go, potatoes, parboiled potatoes in the books and in many books from 50, 60 years ago. Brilliant. Bait out close in here as well. It's my banker. What well, a good job I did. I've gone to the float instead of the ledger out there with the big uh, potato on. Tiny piece of potato on the hook, and I've hooked up using the float. Float fished tiny piece of segment of potato, the new potato. Not a big fish. Look, it's not a big fish, but gratefully accepted on a tough day. And two to potato. Well, nearly two. Won't be two if he goes under this staging. And on a size 18 hook, three pound bottom. That looks like a common. Got for a second minute, I thought it was going to be crucial. When you've had a tough day, you just want to catch fish and save the blank. 
you don't like to bully them too much. When you're catching plenty of fish, you tend to be a little bit cocky and pull them too hard. So I'm trying to bully this, but take my time with it as well, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, nice, nice common, nice looking common. Let's move that camera for you guys. Just in case we lose it. And just in case I kick the camera in the water. I think professional cameramen would have kittens if they knew where I put this camera. This will make life worse. The gale of wind has come back up again. This is a decent common. You'll notice how I leave my other rod in the margins, fishing away on a tough day. You want to take every chance you can get. Why did I put that small hook on? Why did I tie it on? I know it's sort of work, but. Take my shot. Oh, it's a lovely one. Lovely, jubbly. Let's get him on the mat, I'll show him to you. A quick look at it, and we'll pop it back. Lovely looking common there. Nine pounds, I'll give it nine pounds. Thick across the back there. Beautiful fish. Float fished potato. My God, but it's been a tough one, I have to say. I have not seen a single fish caught around it all day, well, all afternoon, because I've only come for the afternoon. Great fish. Right, now you guys obviously don't believe about casting this potato that I've told you about, how we used to use it years ago. So here I am up the local park early, hoping to miss um, all the people that are going to say, excuse me, can we call the police? There's a man casting a potato in the middle of a field. I'm using my spud rod, or oh, it's going to be renamed now, obviously, the spud rod. I've got my potato. It has the casting pad, the support pad, just here with the hook. Potato slides down on it. The line comes straight out the centre. Now, as I do a bit of building work, I'm using one of these. Let's just show you. Right here, you know, a proper big tape measure, right? Over there, past the gentleman walking the dog, and I do hope the dog doesn't like potatoes. That stick you might see over there, the bamboo stick, is... Obviously I'm not going to reach it, am I? That's 50 yards away. I've measured it, I've taped it out in the field. So, I guess, what do you think I'm going to cast with the potato, guys? No lead, no weight, no bolt rigs, none of all that fancy gizmo stuff. A small, parboiled potato that we used 40 and 50 years ago. I suppose I might get 20 yards, what do you think? Could have done without matey with his dog there. I just see, I don't know, I've never played a Labrador in a field before on a spog rod. I don't know, could be a pretty expensive vet's bill, couldn't it? Dog chokes on potato. Man arrested. Right, I've got wind in my face now, guys. Give it some welly because I have in fact invested heavily and got two potatoes, a spare, in my pocket. This is the one. Let's go down and have a look at it. Oh, there we go guys, there's the uh, 50 yard marker. I'm going to pace it out from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. There we have my potato parboiled with the crust pad. 60 yards. OMG. I've got to have one more cast and hope the guy with the dog leaves. What? 71 yards, guys. Now, of course, you don't have to distance cast for potatoes. It's just years ago, when we were on these sort of estate-type lakes and lily beds are out there, the fish did get underneath the lily pads, and if you could get on the edge of the lily pads, you in with a good shout. That's how we used to catch them. So there you go. I'm off now. At least you've seen me cast it. You know it works. You can give it a go yourself. Don't... <laughs> Why, believe me, I've only been fishing 50 years. Anyway, I'm going back to the lake, see if I can catch another one for you. And of course I shall be taking my trusty spod rod. Sorry, spud rod. Well guys, it's still tough on the carp. 
the wind's dropped for a second. Had some spanking roach, just as a sort of a side, bouncing uh, really between about two rod lengths out and one leg, you know, rod length out. And I'll put some uh, maggots on now while I'm waiting for this other potato rod to go up up the margins. And I've got something different, and I think, other than the roach, it is a nice rut, so worth a look at. And that's what I like about all round fishing is I'm not just going carp fishing. Look at this. Is that not a pretty little chappy? And that's the rud as opposed to the roach. And I'm getting that while I'm waiting for the inside rod to pick up. I'm not getting bites on the outside at all. So what I'm doing is trying this inside one. I've had those two and I've bounced between rud fishing and wait for a carp. And that, was, that is really what all round fishing is about is adapting, changing, and getting the best out of a bad day that you can. And it's certainly the most peculiar day. Everybody complaining about this weather pressure system or something that's doing something to the fish. Still, that is another fish they wouldn't have caught if I hadn't have been here, if I'd been sitting at home. I shall plod on and give it about another hour. It's that time, it's spud time again, folks. I had loads and loads of little tweaks there. Tell you, it's a really, really bad day for me to test fish this potato for you. And this one was twi twitching, in fact, so much so I wound the bobbin right up tight, you know, to the butt. And just watched the quiver tip. And I've nailed it on the quiver tip, and at the moment I'm still attached. It wouldn't surprise me if it pings off. Everybody around is moaning, saying this weather system is really screwing up the bites. Most peculiar. But, fish on for the moment. So we'll see what we get here, see how long this lasts, see if I get in the net. There's a big lump of metal out there, so I could overfall or something, you know, a pipe that must drain out. I don't know what it does, but this one is trying to dig for it. Oh, don't go in there. Right by the rushes, right by the rushes. Let's tread in the leftover potatoes, skid all in that and the duck doo doo. The camera looks like it's about to fall over. I've dumped absolutely my entire bucket of potatoes into that margin swim. Maybe it's got them going. I kind of doubt it because everybody's struggling today. Come on, man, I just want to take a photo. What is, what is it with you? Oh, that's a nice looking fish. I shouldn't complain. I should not complain. I can't seem to get the roll on the surface. Oh, what a view. What a beauty. Boys, that was worth peeling all those potatoes for, for sure. Oh, yeah, it's a nice. Oh, this one's definitely a double. I don't need to weigh this one. Oh, yeah. Now this, people, is what we used to fish the potatoes for. Nice double figure fish like this. Beautiful. A lovely big tail here. Beautiful big tail. Pick them up very, very slowly. Doesn't disturb them. Keep them low to the ground. Look at that one. That is a spanker. What a fish to close out with. Looks like I've got water on the lens. Can't be helped. Lovely. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. You've seen us catch on, on garden peas. You've seen us catch now on potatoes. That's the old way of doing it. And it still works. Look. It's got to be worth a shot. And cheap. What was that? Two and a half kilos? One pound 19p or something. For this. Now, of course, years ago, when I was playing, we did that word. P-L-A-Y. Play. I mean, kids don't seem to do that. We used to have to... Well, we had nothing to play with. We had to make everything to play with. And one of those was our telephones. That's right, from a potato can or any other can. As I said, just be sure it has the edges rounded off or you put some tape around there, you put it here, the other person at the other end talks into it, you can talk like this, there. We use string, I have to say, it's the first time I've ever used fishing line. I have my good lady wife at the other end of the garden, which is possibly not a bad place to have her. 
and she's right down the other end and I'm going to see with a yes and no whether this works. Do you think it's going to work kids? Do you think you can actually make a telephone out of a piece of string, a piece of fishing line and two empty cans? Testing time. Now Hillary, and I've measured this, is nearly 40 yards away down there. So we'll see if it does work. Do we have any sheep in the can? Is the bonfire smoking? Is it raining today? I think that's conclusive evidence. I mean, of course, such a modern piece of technology as this beans Graham pulling into the modern world. Yes, I've also got a mobile phone. It's in my pocket. It is, as a saying goes, as long as a piece of string. Oh, sorry. Hang on a minute. Let's take this one. I have to take this one. Could be, uh, could be international. Hello. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably be there about two thirty. Uh, you bring the boat. Yeah. I should think uh, the swim on the left, but don't tell anybody about it. Uh, when you get there, give me a call on the potato can. Okay. Bye.